Thanks for uh, bringing me out here tonight um, to Kendra and Jace. I'm excited to talk to you about um, this topic and um, just to talk to you a little bit about my experience with prayer, with discernment, with um, the St. Ignatius discernment sort of method, if you will, and, and try to give you some insights that hopefully can help you in your own prayer life and can um, hopefully aid you in, most of all, in your relationship with Jesus. And so um, that's kind of what's going to happen tonight, hopefully. So pray for me. We're Actually, we're going to pray right now um, and call upon the power of the Holy Spirit and ask for the presence of that Spirit to guide us this evening. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. O God, who taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that by the gift of the same Spirit we may be always truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed Stanley Rother, pray for us. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to sit down, kind of like I'm giving a concert. So um, I want to begin with um, asking, any, uh, asking you all, how many of you have read anything or listened to something like a podcast or any kind of way have you... Um, learn something about St. Ignatius's discernment of spirits, particularly his rules of discernment. So if you have, raise your hand. If you have had any experience with that. Okay. So um, I'm going to try to uh, talk a little bit about that. If you've read or you've listened to um, like a podcast or you've gone on a retreat of some kind, hold on a second. Or, um, or maybe um, something like that, but you still don't understand or can't seem to figure out how to discern God's will for your life. If you're in that place today, I'm sorry. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to really help you figure all that out tonight. So if you came tonight hoping that you'll be able to figure everything out about how to discern the will of God, um, I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. <laughs> the solution isn't just going to happen in one night. And so if you want to know the will of God for your life, and you want to learn how to discern well God's will, it's something that has to happen over a lifetime of prayer, of sacrifice, of trust in God, of turning to the Lord with your whole heart. Um, I'm here not to give some solution. I'm here to talk about this and hopefully in the end to help all of us to focus on one thing or what you really could say one person. And, of course, that's Jesus. Because really, in the end, discernment is really just about our relationship with the Lord. And if it gets reduced or confused or um, whatever with lots of other things, that's when discernment of God's will begins to become difficult for us to understand. It can become frustrating. Lots of things can happen. Discernment is ultimately about growing in deep and lasting relationship with Jesus. And in that relationship, we cooperate with the grace God gives us to remain in that relationship. And that's actually something that the Lord teaches us, right, in the scriptures. John 15. So if you want, you know, a great... Um, scripture for prayer to help you with discernment and for a lot of things read as often as you can john chapter 15 
Because in that scripture, the Lord says, remain in me as I remain in you. And in the end, that's everything, remaining with Jesus. And we remain with the Lord, of course, in several different ways. But primarily, it's by remaining within his grace, which is his divine life. And so discernment is learning how to remain with the Lord within the grace that he has given to us through the church and the sacraments. And within that relationship, the Lord moves our hearts. He affects our thoughts, feelings, and desires. He, he teaches us how to listen inwardly to the Holy Spirit guiding us. So discernment, if, if you were to look at Ignatius and his rules and the things that he wrote, discernment is, first of all, about awareness, a kind of spiritual awareness that he calls us to grow in. And in fact, if you read anything about the story of his conversion and his life, it really began by a kind of sort of awareness that in one mode of action in his life, he felt like he was moving far and far away from God. But when he started reading about the saints and started reading about the life of the church and life of Christ, then suddenly there was this lasting desire to stay in relationship with God. All these other things that he was doing and reading and, and whatnot, they kind of were fleeting. When he read about the saints, the church, and Christ, he had this desire to remain in that mode of life. He wanted to, to keep that with him. And in fact, he recognized that there was something happening even to him, happening inwardly within his soul. And so it became, for him, it was an awareness that God was present and wanted to remain with him in this relationship. And within that re realization, he began to understand like, okay, this is what I want always. I don't want to be in a position where I'm outside of relationship with God. I wanna be always in relationship with Jesus so that I can know his will, so I can recognize these, these movements of the Holy Spirit in my life. And with that, I can say yes when God calls me. Um, and so this uh, spiritual awareness, what, is it, what does it take? For him, it, he recognized that it takes a lot of consistency, discipline in paying attention to how God is affecting our thoughts, feelings, and desires. But of course, discernment is not just about those things. And so it's not just about thoughts and our feelings and what we're desiring. We all know that those things can sometime, sometimes come from some other place or they're very simple. Like if I say to myself, I'm hungry or I'm tired or I'm thirsty, that's probably not from God. Okay, <laughs> That's not God giving you a spiritual movement. Um, but if you say something like, I want to grow in faithfulness, I want to know God more, I want to receive his mercy, I want to be free of sin, I don't want to be bound constantly by my bad decisions, I, I, I don't want to make the decision to not go to church on Sunday, why do I keep making that decision or other things like that? Um, those kinds of questions then go into a different realm, right? And we want help with that, right? We want help with that. How many of you have gone to prayer because you wanted help? God, help me. Okay, you can raise your hand if you want. <laughs> right, help me, Lord. And, and we should, we should ask God for help. And so Ignatius was in the same position. He um, recognized like he was not in control there's nothing he could do, and so he turned to God. And things started happening that he never imagined. In particular, 
helping to find the Jesuit order. That was kind of a big deal. Um, but also creating a, a method to help others discern the will of God. And so his discernment of spirits and his 14 rules of discernment, he began to write and develop and put forth to help people. And actually, um, anybody that maybe, I don't know if any of you have studied very deeply the, the rules of discernment for Ignatius. One of the things about it is he wrote those actually specifically for spiritual directors. And so one of the things, so, does, so if, you're, if you're not a spiritual director, it doesn't mean you, you can't read them. <laughs> In fact, you should read them and learn them and, and, and think through them. Um, but he wrote those specifically for directors who are helping others to discern God's will for their life or just to discern what God is, what's, what's God doing here right now, whether it's a vocation or whether it's something even, you know, more basic, like I want to find freedom from the sin I'm attached to. So discernment's not just about feelings or desires or thoughts because those things can become selfish and self-seeking, pleasure-seeking even, just not from God. So one of the questions I already heard tonight when it comes to discernment, and maybe some of you have asked this question too, how do I know then? How do I know if it's God or if it's the devil? How do I know if it's God or just something that my mom put in my head? You know, or, you know, whatever it may be. And so this is a difficult question when it comes to discernment. And um, so I'm going to give you a couple of ways to approach prayer so that you can help with that question. Because um, ultimately, it's, it's really about, not about knowing, it's about consistency in the relationship that you have with God. So if you go to prayer just to, to know specifically what you're discerning, let's say it's a vocation, um, it's going to be very difficult, frustrating, and sometimes futile. But if you go to prayer with a desire to grow in relationship with the Lord, and that's the goal, then as that relationship grows, the Lord will make himself known. He will make his will and love for you clear. The more we grow in deep love with Jesus and receive that love, then we'll be, be able to be in, in the disposition that we need to be in to not only know, but have this desire to say yes and commit our life to the Lord. Have anybody, any of you heard of Father Gately? He um, has written a few things in the world. Um, some of the, the consecrations of, to the Blessed Mother and some of the, the things that are out there with his consecrations and his prayers. And so he's, a, he's been a great um, gift to the, to the church with some of the things he's put out there on prayer and discernment and turning to the Lord and devotion to our Blessed Mother and all of these things within the church. So he created like a little uh, acronym, if you will, or he uses the, the word air. So I want to give you this little thing from Father Gately. So A-I-R. So you're, if, you have, if you're writing stuff down, you can write that down. So A is awareness. And actually, that's a very Ignatian word. Um, and in your prayer, if you are a consistent person who prays, um, you will know that certain times during prayer, you, you get certain spiritual thoughts or ideas will come to your mind or you'll read something in the scriptures and you'll be like, oh, I've read that like a thousand times, but it's saying something different to me right now. Or it's helping me to think about God in a different way. It's helping me to grow in a deeper appreciation of God's presence. And so this awareness of God's presence is one of the first things that Father Gately talks about in helping us to grow deeper in, with God, but also to help us discern what God's will is versus what it's not, or what is God's doing versus what the devil might be doing, the evil one. 
He says, awareness of God's presence. This is our need to seek God's will. And it's about God loving us within these moments of prayer. And then he says, you move from awareness to identifying, identify. So there's, I have an awareness that God is speaking to me or he's present to me or that he's loving me. Now, what is, when I identify that, then I ask, okay, what is this desire that he's placing on my heart? What is the desire of God for my life in this moment or for my vocation? Um, in the particular thing that I'm discerning. God, I want to do what you want me to do. That's kind of the, the prayer of identify. Uh, Lord, I want to do it, so show me what that is. I, I want to be able to know and also respond. And with that, I will commit my life. For me, if, if you want to know a little bit about my discernment story, for me, that prayer was essential. When I was in college and I was discerning what God wanted me to do, um, the most simple prayer that helped me the most was, God, help me to do what you want me to do. Because that got me over like the hump of me just doing, asking God to help me to do what I want to do. So if I'm just always saying to God, well, I want to be this, and I want to do that, and I want to live this way, and I want to go here, and I want to visit that. You can do all that stuff, and God will bless you at times. But eventually, we do have to ask the question, like, Lord, what do you want? And Lord, help me to do what you want. What is your desire for my life? And when you say that prayer, you have to actually mean it. And at least for me in my experience of discernment and prayer, when I said to God, I want to do what you want me to do. And I, if you make it clear for me, God, if you help me to know, if you give me just an inkling of the answer to that, I will do it and I'll give my whole life to it. There won't be a question. And so I had to be serious about the commitment that I wanted to make to God. And then finally, the R is respond. So it's awareness, identify, and then respond. And so vocational discernment, discernment of God's will takes action. It takes action. You, the, the idea that you spend years and years and years discerning and never making a decision, that's the futile part. Of any of discernment of anything of God's will. Don't be afraid to say yes. Choose. Choose God. Choose what He's placing before you. Don't be afraid. Reject evil. Do good. And so with the Lord, it requires a lot of trust and a lot of courage. For um for Father Gallagher. Does anybody know Father Timothy Gallagher? He's probably the number one expert in the United States on Ignatius and the discernment of spirits. So anything you can read by Father Timothy Gallagher, if you want to know more about the discernment of spirits, um, he's got lots of great podcasts, YouTube videos. He's got a whole series on just the 14 rules. So I think it's about 12 or 13 videos. And so they're all there. It's an amazing series. So if you want to really dive deep into the discernment of spirits, check out those with Father Gallagher. But one of the things he puts forth in teaching about the discernment of spirits is um, another little kind of acronym. Maybe you've heard it's called R. It's like the, where, where, you know, St. Ignatius becomes a pirate. Arr. No, it's just A-R-R-R. -R -R, okay? So he says that the best way to pray and to enter into a relationship with the Lord, we are growing in, in love and 
we are also growing in a deeper awareness of God's will for you is, is to use this sort of method. So first, A for him is acknowledge. You have to acknowledge your need for God. Acknowledge your need for prayer. How many of you pray daily? Some of you are being honest. That's good. Or maybe you just don't want to raise your hand. It's okay, too. <laughs> How many of you pray consistently, would you say? When you go to prayer, is it just you saying words, or do you spend time listening? You spend time in silence. Okay? These are rhetorical to you. I'll raise your hand every time. <laughs> Just something for you to think about. So the first is to acknowledge I need to pray. I want to pray. And I want to pray about this particular question or need. The need to trust Jesus and the need to call upon the Holy Spirit so that you're not just figuring things out on your own. So if you're, if you're praying and you're discerning and you say these words, God, I need to figure this out, you've already lost the discernment game. Okay? So discernment is not about us figuring something out. The sermon is about us growing in relationship with Jesus and in his love that he pours upon us, the Lord figures this out with us. It's about the Lord doing more than what we think we can do. And so we acknowledge that. And then the first R after that is to relate. So I acknowledge the need for God in my discernment, in my prayer. And then I relate to the Lord by bringing everything to God. So relating is, is us speaking and telling God our needs, our struggles, our sins, our attachments. Um, what are we discerning? All of these things. Burden God with your needs. Don't be afraid to burden God with your needs. That's so important. Because God wants it. He said that to us in Matthew's gospel. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened. Give me everything. Put, put my cross on you, it's easy. And then give me your cross. Give me what you need. So don't be afraid to relate God. Burden God. This is us using our words, our thoughts, our trust. The second R is to receive then. So you acknowledge, you relate, and then you have to receive. The receiving part of discernment and prayer is the biggest part. It's the biggest part. In fact, I've heard some people say that prayer should be about 10% us saying things and 90% of us just receiving from God. Receiving grace upon grace upon grace. So this might be the most important part of prayer and discernment. Learn to receive the love of God. And it's, it's frightening to, to be vulnerable with anything or anybody, especially God. Because when you're vulnerable with God and you let God just love you, wherever you're at, whatever is going on in your life, then you expose all the things that you try to hide from God. And so receiving is kind of like that. It's like exposing everything that you don't want God to know about. Every habit that's bad, every sin, everything you've done throughout your history, everything you may or may not have already confessed, every fear, every lie, every wound, open it up to the Lord. This is number one uno essential to discernment of anything, to a life of prayer with God. 
learning to receive the love of God, listening, silence in prayer, using tools like Lexio Divina, which if you know a little bit about that style of prayer, it's really about listening and receiving from God mostly. You read divine reading, but it's not like I'm doing it. I read it so that God can do something to me. If I read the Bible, I'm not doing something to that Bible. No, when I read the scriptures and the word of God, it's God doing something. It's God speaking. So we want to put ourselves in a position where God is speaking to me. Um, awareness of the presence of the Holy Spirit calling us to fall back into the arms of the Heavenly Father. Seeing the Father, like in the story of the prodigal son, running to you. That is receiving. Embracing you and calling you his beloved son or daughter. And the final R is respond. So after you've spent this time, you must respond. Say yes to Jesus and his love for you. This response to discernment and prayer takes total trust and total commitment. Not perfect. God isn't calling us to perfection. We does say be perfect like your Heavenly Father is perfect. But that's heaven. So we're working toward that. He's saying um, don't be perfect, but be willing to strive for that. But not on your own. The prodigal son didn't, you know, reconcile with the father and by having to say a bunch of words, he just started walking back. He just started heading back home. And once the father saw him, he ran to him. So we have to respond to that kind of love. Respond, Lord, I want to know your will. And whatever it is, Lord, I will do it. I will go, Lord, wherever you call me. Respond with this kind of love and trust and without fear. Um, let's see. One more little like thought here. Um, one of the definitions sometimes that gets put out there, and this was put out by Father Gallagher on sort of what is Ignatian discernment of spirits? What is just discernment in general? He said it's a process by which we become aware of the movements in our heart, understand where they come from, and either accept them or reject them. And so Father Gallagher puts things very, I would say very practically. And actually Ignatius does too. And so, um, I'm not going to go through every single rule. We don't have enough time for that. Um, and there's lots of great stuff out there where you can do that on your own. Whether it's read, you know, a Discernment of Spirits book by Father Gallagher, go through his videos, or there's lots of other resources. Um, but um, I would say that um, whatever it is, however you discern, um, focus your life, focus that discernment, on Jesus, his love for you, and remaining within that love. I'm going to stop there because it's almost eight. I'll open it up for questions. Thank you. If there are any questions, I can tell a little bit about my vocation story if you're interested in that. Sometimes that helps people to, to you know, help with their own discernment. Though it looks like some of you are fully living your vocation right now. I see a baby in the audience. <laughs> I know many of you are married, um, but some of you aren't. So that's, that's cool. You're discerning and figuring things out. Discerning doesn't ever stop, by the way. Just because you're married, right? You're, you're always discerning. What does God want me to do now with my spouse, with my child, with my life? So anyways, yeah, good question. Yeah. And I think what I struggle with is finding time to be quiet with the baby. 
Yeah. I've got some thoughts. Um, I don't know what's going to be best. I, I would presume that for, for anybody, for any parent with children, that it's going to be different and, and things will work and some things won't. Um, I, can, I can tell you that it would seem to me, because I'm not a parent, I don't have children, <laughs> and, and so I go, at the end of my day I go to the rectory and it's quiet. Unless Father Lawrence, the Proko Vicar, is, you know, screaming and wants food or something. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, um, my, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is that achieving a consistent prayer in that situation requires a choice to make a lot of sacrifices. Right? And so I can only speak to what I've heard people say and also what I've witnessed. Um, when I was in college, I, I got to know this family and, and the mom of this family they had, and I became friends with some of the children of the family because we were in college together. And so I, I got to go to this home uh, several times of, of this family and they had six children, there were six children. And um, one of the things that the mom told me, because I, I think, I don't know if I asked her this or somehow the question of just prayer and how she prays and how she prays with her family. She said, almost every night, even when the kids were growing, were growing up and they were younger, I had to wait. And so when everyone was asleep, even if it was for just a little bit of time, that's when I prayed. Right? So even if you get this 15 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour, I don't you know, however long, your ch the children are asleep and before they wake up again, or however it works. Um, so you have to kind of know your, your, your situation and what's going on, but it, it takes sacrifice and a willingness to say, you know, it's going to be difficult because maybe I want to sleep right now, and I've got this opportunity to sleep, but I can take 15 minutes or 30 minutes and do this. And so that's part of it, I think. Um, and so being willing to, to make that sacrifice, because you know it's going to, in, in the long run, it'll be good for everybody. Um, but also, I, my sense of practical things, like um, asking for the help of others at times. If there's friends or family, being able to say, um, hey, would you watch so-and-so for a little bit <laughs> so I can spend 30 minutes praying? Um, my, my sense too is, and I've seen this happen, is that sometimes moms, moms and dads, like husbands and wives, they figure out how to kind of tag team things. So sometimes that can work, <laughs> the tag team method, where it's like, hey, um, you've got, you know, the children for the next hour, I'm going to the adoration chapel. Then you come back and you can tag team, and sometimes that can work really well. Um, I think in the end too, it's just recognizing like when the opportunity comes up that you ask the Lord to give you the, the awareness and the like recognition that here it is, I need to take it now or I'm not gonna get it again, <laughs> right? And so, and that's you know, time and, and all. Does that help a little bit? <laughs> but um yeah i i say it knowing that it's not easy i i don't i don't think that at all because um it doesn't matter what state in life you are in almost everybody i know based on lots of different reasons will say i don't have time to pray and so if I'm saying that to myself, whatever position I'm in or whatever situation I'm in, that is a moment where you should take a step back and go, okay, Lord, maybe I need to rethink this because I, I, I need to make time. I need to make the time. But um, so just keep working at it and know that 
the Lord loves you even if it's hard or you, sometimes you don't do it. Just keep persistent. And that would be something that Ignatius would say is you find yourself in a place of desolation. Remember when you were in a time of consolation and don't change what you were doing. Does that make sense? So if you, were, if you find yourself in a place where it's hard to pray, remember a time when it was easier or where you knew God was present or where things were working really well and go back to that time and don't change what you were doing then. Because so often when we struggle with prayer, we just change everything up. Oh, I just Maybe I'll stop doing this prayer and I'll start doing this prayer and I'll just change everything up and try this. And sometimes it's better to think, oh no, there was a time when this was working, so I need to stick to it because eventually the Lord will, will, will help. That grace will kick in. That's rule of five and six, I think. <laughs> Any other question? We'll get one more question maybe or, yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> right now, I, I suffer from what I call uh, letterbox prayer. Mm -hmm. where the first day, second R, or sorry, first, basically, I, yeah. I pray. I know I just really struggle with the receiving part. At least uh, in the moment of prayer. Aside yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. are, are there any other recommendations for yeah improvement? yeah um, boy this is a really hard one because I think I would say as Christians but especially as Catholics we're kind of conditioned to just sort of constantly be in the mode of relating to God and of course that's good that's a good thing but when when the Lord asks us or we when we hear that, that kind of thing. Now I need to kind of be silent and receive from God. It's difficult because we quickly become restless, right? That's where things are happening like I get distracted, I lose, you know, focus, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to, you know, how to be in that, that position. And so um, I would say that um, on one hand, it takes persistence. So St. Paul, for example, taught us the importance of persevering in that kind of prayer. And so persevere in trying. That's the first thing. The second thing is use what the Lord has given to us. So I think for me, one of the best ways that has helped me to become more and more receptive in my life of prayer is utilizing the Bible, the scriptures. And so um, learning how to, to do well, the, 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 the practice of Lexio Divina, or some form of that, whether you call it that or not, where you're reading the scriptures, but those words that are there, you're letting those words kind of sink in, okay? And so, you know, so for example, if I, you know, read in Matthew's gospel where Jesus says, Go out into the whole world and baptize every nation in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then at the end of that, he says, and I'm with you always until the end of the age. Well, sometimes those words, they just kind of fall over us. But sometimes we see that phrase, I'm with you always until the end of the age. If you're ever reading scripture and you read something, you stop. You're like, hey, that, that's kind of speaking to me in a different way. That itself is a form of receptivity, right? And so allow yourself in those moments to stop and to keep looking over those words. Repetition helps with re um, receptivity. That's why a meditation is a great way to pray because a meditation sometimes involves the repetition of words um, that's why the rosary often is very uh, powerful in helping people receive grace um, in times of need because it's a repetitive motion of prayer. Uh, Chaplet of Divine Mercy, the Jesus Prayer with the Beads, those kinds of ways can, can be really nice tools 
for putting us in a place of receptivity, where it's easier for us, because we're saying these words over and over, they kind of just allow the Lord to work. And so I would say those are some good methods to, to help you. Um, and, um, and, and use the words of scripture that we sometimes uh, forget. Like, do you, have you ever prayed the Liturgy of the Hours, anybody? So one of the things when you, when you pray the Liturgy of the Hours, one of the first things you say is, God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. So using prayers like that when you begin to pray can be really helpful to be receptive to God. We're actually calling upon the presence of the Holy Spirit for us. Um, here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Things like that. Um, those kinds of words in the scripture, in the Psalms, and our prayer can be helpful. Does that help a little? Yes, I think so. Okay, thank you. Good. Thank you, guys.